Whether you're brand new into regenerative agriculture or you've been implementing these practices for many years, regardless, it's very important to understand the six principles in building healthy quality soils to make sure that you're on the right path and going up and not backwards. Today, we're gonna to talk about what those six principles are and why they're important. Hey, it's Ashley Kettner with RioMax. I've been working with ranchers across North America who've been implementing regenerative agriculture principles on their operation. And my husband and I have been implementing these principles on our operation as well. So what are these six principles to build the quality of your soil? Well, first it's context. Then it's do not disturb the soil, surface armor, diversity, living roots, and integrating animals. These are all very important principles when we're talking about building the quality and the health of your soils. Let's dive in and break this down just a little bit further and explain what the six principles mean and why they're important. So number one, context. It's so important to understand your context. And when I say that, I mean your environment, your location, your availability of the certain tools you may need. Rancher A in Southern Texas compared to Rancher B in Northern Alberta could have the exact same goal for their operation, but how they get to that goal is going to be different because of your environment. So know your context. Number two, don't disturb the soil. If you can at all do as minimal as minimal disturbance as possible, um, for example, no-till would be a great option. When we're really turning that soil over and exposing that soil, we're actually destroying the living organisms and the life underground. That very life that is what is giving us the nutrients to our plants. So we don't want to disturb that. We don't want to wreck that. We don't want to kill that. When you are disturbing the soil, you're actually um, disturbing or destroying the highways underground. So use that. Do not disturb as much as possible. If there's a time, okay, again, we go back to context, but do your best to leave the soil alone. Surface armor. It's very important to keep that soil covered. If we are exposing it, that opens that window wide up for wind erosion, water erosion, and we really, we just, we need to keep that soil um, in, in place. <laughs> we need it to stay there. We need to build that structure. Um, we need to build the resilience. When we're building it and keeping it covered, um, that's going to help us um, encourage the life underground to continue going in the right direction, build soil resiliency and water capacity, um, water holding capacity, and so on. So very important to keep that soil covered as much as possible. The next one is diversity. So diversity does not mean just diversity in plants. It actually means diversity in plants, microbes, insects, wildlife, animals, really any living thing that's gonna be on your operation. We need that to be diversified because they all complement each other. Um, what nutrients they take, what they leave, so on and so forth. So it's important to have that diversity um, out there. The next one kind of plays along with that. It is living roots. So for example, um, when we're talking about diverse plants having a lot of different species, we're gonna have a lot of different um, root depths and that's going to help feed um, the different microorganisms that are in the soil. And um, some plants will take certain nutrients, some will leave certain nutrients. So it's important to have um, the diversity there and then the living roots all through the year as long as possible so that we can continue to feed those microorganisms in the soil. Last but not least is integrating livestock. So the more we can integrate the livestock into the land, the better, because having them walk across the land, having that hoof action is gonna be beneficial. Having them spread that manure and get those nutrients back into the soil is going to be very beneficial. Um, naturally, when you have um, good um, nutrient dense 
um, fertilizer in a way, uh, manure, and it's natural is where I'm trying to get, is that's going to bring more diverse insects like your dung beetles um, that will help bring that manure back into the soil. And it's important that we have that nutrient cycling going as much as possible because that will help continue to bring your journey of soil health up that next notch and get um, even more organic matter and even more production and hit that goal um, a little bit faster um, for what your operation is after. I hope that gives you a better understanding of what the six principles are in building quality soils, but I encourage you to continue doing research and continuing to understand how you can implement some of these principles on your operation. But remember your context, remember your environment, because those are very, very important. And if I could give one tip of anything at all, it would be to not dive in and try and do all of it at one time in one year. Uh, because there's more than likely going to be mistakes or things that you run into that you had not done your research on yet. So figure out your first goal, figure out a plan of what you're going to do and why you're going to do it. Understand your why, because that will help make sure you're on the right path for success and getting that goal um, met. So one other piece of advice is to find a trusted friend or neighbor who has been on this journey and um, utilize them, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions because that is how we all learn. And don't be afraid to make a mistake because we all learn from our mistakes. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. And again, if you have questions, definitely don't hesitate to give us a call.